Most of us would like to buy Australian made, but in the end it usually comes down to price. So we've put together a shopping list of the cheapest alternatives and worked out where they come from. Buying Australian made, so many of us have the very best intentions. I don't see why we should subsidise Chinese farmers when we should be subsidising Australian. But of course, we do all have a budget as well. I prefer to be Australian, but you know, you've got to look at price too. And for price, you can't go past generics, but where on earth do they come from? We bought 50 of the same private label grocery items from both Woolworths and Coles, the sort of things that we all have on the shelf. At both supermarkets, 46% of the groceries we bought were actually made in Australia, but that means that more than half are made elsewhere. Well, 13% were made in China, 12% in Thailand, 6% in Italy and 3% in New Zealand. But we also found things made in Belgium, Brazil, Fiji, Germany, India, Mexico, Poland, Singapore, South Africa, Spain and Sri Lanka. Many of the products um, that are in private label we actually don't make here anymore, but our concern is those products which we do make, such as our food products. Lynn Wilkinson represents Ausbuy and says with the economy the way it is, it's as important as ever to buy Australian made. If we don't buy what is made and owned in Australia, then the profits are going to go overseas, the decisions are going to be made elsewhere, and we're losing the jobs. So which of the generics are from overseas? These Woolies and Coles corn kernels, for example, are both from Thailand. Look closely at these tins of baked beans and spaghetti. They've come in from Italy. Believe it or not, these family assorted biscuits are made in Fiji and toothpaste from both the supermarkets was made in India. Now for most, there is a big brand Australian alternative, but on our sums, you're up for between 10% more and double the price. I'd much rather they were made here and, and uh, even if it was, it did cost a little bit more. Now the good news is it doesn't always cost more to buy Australian made. We did find plenty of examples where the generic brands were made right here. Here are the ones to look for. Fabric softener, dog food, corn flakes, parmesan cheese, plain flour, the list goes on and on. Plus there's toilet paper, insect spray and cheese slices. We're always trying to source our Coles brand products from Australia. We have an Australian first sourcing policy. Uh, in many cases we've been able to in recent times bring back products that were once made overseas and bring them back to Australian suppliers. Jim Cooper is from supermarket giant Coles. Both he and his competitor Rob Evenden from Woolworths say it's a delicate balance between where something's made and how much it eventually costs. We start here but if price requires us to go overseas then we will. We just want to get the customers the price that they're looking for in a good quality product. One tricky thing though is although the Aussie made groceries often scream the fact on the front of the packaging, the foreign made stuff has it tucked away in tiny print on the back. We find of all the food labelling issues, country of origin is one that's right up there. People want to know where the food comes from and they want to be told in ways that make sense to them. Christopher Zinn represents Consumer Group Choice. They've been campaigning for years on the very issue of product labelling so that the public can be better informed. I just want to see it displayed as clearly as possible so people who are always in a rush when they're doing the shopping pick something up, compare, look in the trolley or otherwise. Finally though, we did find some examples on our shopping trip where, generic or not, it's all from overseas. Things like garbage bags, cleaning wipes and scourers are all made in China. We couldn't find a local version. Every time a consumer makes a purchase, just think, what's in it for Australia, not just what's in it for me. Well now some very important safety tips for the home renovator. With the help of handyman extraordinaire Scott Cam, we've put together a guide on what to do when you find asbestos in your house. Well I think it's dangerous because it's unknown. You don't know you're being affected by it until maybe 20 years down the track. Scott Cam, host of The Block, says asbestos is a hidden killer and do-it-yourself renovators are putting themselves at risk by being ignorant about its dangers. Scott says the first thing DIY renovators need to do is identify asbestos. There's three main areas and that is external cladding on the outside of the house. You've got the old corrugated asbestos roofing yep. that you see a lot on carports and things like that in factories. And also in wet areas like this, the bathroom walls above here, that what these tiles have been put onto is possibly asbestos. We've always on the block done a hazardous material audit, and that includes asbestos, and we get the whole place checked uh, over. Then we get the air tested, 
and we make sure the whole place is perfectly clean before the contestants go anywhere near the joint. One in three Australian houses built before 1985, roughly, has asbestos in it. That's because of its unique combination of strength, flexibility, insulation and soundproofing qualities. But when asbestos is disturbed or broken up, it forms a dust of tiny fibres. If inhaled, they can be life-threatening. Margaret Kent from law firm Slater & Gordon prosecutes asbestos disease cases, most of them for DIY enthusiasts. It is difficult because most of the people who come to see me have an incurable illness. She says it's too late to save victims once they come to her. If you're thinking of renovating a house built between about 1940 and the mid-1980s, you should have the house looked at to see if there is asbestos. If there is, you should have it removed properly. The pain's a constant reminder that, um, you know, there's cancer there. Anita Steiner suffered from mesothelioma, an aggressive and terminal form of asbestosis. I remembered back when I was a child and I'd been um, watching the dismantling the workshop for my father. As a little girl, Anita played nearby as the men demolished her dad's shed, riddled with asbestos. That one event 40 years ago cut short her life. Yes, sweetie. Recently, Anita lost her battle. Her little daughter, still unaware, mummy, has gone. I hate it to happen to anyone else, and it's, it's well, it does make me angry that there is so, such um, little awareness out there, and that there's so many people getting expo exposed to it all the time. That just don't realise. I would say 90% sure that this little section here is asbestos. Very common for the corners to snap off because it's very brittle. If there's asbestos in your home, leave it to the professionals. I think that everybody, if they're doing any reno, should get an asbestos audit. A professional comes out, goes through the place, and once it's all removed by a professional, then you get an air test done. Make sure there's no airborne particles. If you think you can remove asbestos yourself, you know, you're dreaming because it's so dangerous and it's the kids are around and the next door neighbours, it can, it can travel. Absolutely, you must get an expert in to remove it. Some very good advice there and it's worth repeating. If you are planning on renovating, please make sure you get an asbestos audit. Well, call out now for all families to do something for their senior citizens. Make sure they have a seniors card because it can save a lot of money. Already used by several million Australians, it still hasn't found its way into the wallets and purses of many over 60s. It does make a big difference over a period of time. These cards provide great bang for your buck. It's the little plastic card that's saving millions of Aussies bags of money on transport, restaurants, cinemas, gift shops, you name it. Genuine discounts of 5%, 10%, 15% or more. But the best thing of all about this little card, it's absolutely free. Oh look, it's the most marvellous thing, Howard, because it makes all the difference in the world. Sprightly Sydney retiree Judy Ludlam is serious about savings. She's one of a million seniors card holders in her state who flash their plastic passionately. Well, we all know how much things cost these days. So even if you're just getting shampoo and just ordinary things like that that you need, anything is a help. Can I get those on my seniors card, please? Sure. Her senior card savings here? around $2.50. And with that money saved, you'll be amazed what she buys next, also using her seniors card. Yes, it's an all day unlimited rail, bus and ferry pass. Where you can go out for a whole day for $2.50 and have a tremendous time. Judy's not finished yet. She's saved so much on public transport, it's time to splash out. The plastic is flashed and Gloria Jean's coffee is immediately 40 cents cheaper. Get the picture? The other marvellous thing for me, I love going to movies and things, so you get a couple of dollars off your tickets. And if you add it up over a period of time, it adds up a lot. Tyres for your car. I mean, you look how much a good tyre costs. Well, you can save 10, 15 per cent on those. In Brisbane, Robert Crampton is giving his senior's card a belting. Pizzas, for example, great. Most of the pizza places will accept the senior's card. At 71, Robert's learning new tricks every day to save. You want to go away for a weekend somewhere, uh, what's offering hotels or, you know, vacation places and what have you. There's, there's, there's all sorts in there, you know, buying things, you know, shoes, clothing, even chemists, glasses, frames. Oh, the dollars make a difference, I'm sure, for a lot of people. 
um, and they make a difference to us. I mean, it's, it's nice to go in and just ask for a cup of coffee and you get, uh, get a discount on it. Victorian seniors Bill and Betty O'Brien reveal the other great benefit of this card. Besides the savings, it's actually a great way to meet people. We go two or three times to have cups of coffee at one place and because they offer seniors, we find there's a lot of seniors there and it becomes uh, almost a community centre. Though the cheap public transport is the real pot of gold for card holders, it varies from state to state. There's that $2.50 all-day pass in New South Wales, but Victoria has free off-peak travel vouchers. Queensland has half-price urban bus and rail fares, and South and West Australia offer absolutely free off-peak public transport. Potentially huge savings, says Michael O'Neill of National Seniors Australia. In most cases, for a person who applied the card well, you'd be talking of hundreds of dollars worth of savings opportunities. So how do you know what's on offer? It's easy. Every state prints and distributes directories of goods and services. The good news for seniors who travel is that their card will work for many discounts interstate. And there are now also a few overseas travel discounts and savings. So who's eligible for the seniors card? For a start, you have to be at least 60, except in Queensland. All the other states, the seniors card is offered from 60, Queensland is 65 and I think it's time the Queensland Government moved on that space. To be eligible for the card, holders must also work less than a certain number of hours each week. Now some states you can do up to 35 hours of paid work a week, other states as little as 20. But the bottom line is, if you or someone in your family is eligible and hasn't got the seniors card, it's like throwing money away. I probably save hundreds of dollars a year. Yes, I use it whenever I can. I've got two. Two of them? Honestly, I think they're worth their weight in diamonds. Truly. And there's a whole lot more information about the Seniors Card on our website. Well, next on A Current Affair, a happy ending for Lotto, the stolen macaw. And Warwick's World, we catch up with Kappa. Welcome to Wizard World, A Current Affair, rock and roll.